Hello, everyone, and welcome to our a information session. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to learn about St. Louis Community College and the a program. As a disclaimer, please know that this information provided in the presentation is subject to change at any time. a rules and regulations are mandated by the state of Missouri, and STLCC is notified when changes are made. Therefore, it is always important to check with an STLCC staff member for the most up-to-date information. To get started with introductions, my name is Meredith Bushman and I am one of the recruitment coordinators at the Merrimack campus and also presenting with me today is Sharice Danzler, who is a recruiter at the Flores and Valley campus. We are also excited to have Chantel Harris, lead financial aid counselor at the Wildwood campus, and Philip Tier, who is a financial aid manager at the Forest Park campus. Before we begin, we would like to warmly welcome you to STLCC through the eyes of our students, faculty, and staff with a brief video. Enjoy. So today we will be taking a little, we will be talking a little bit about the STLCC locations, our course modalities or ways to learn, campus life, athletics, program of study, cost versus value, steps to getting enrolled, followed by detailed information about the A-plus program. STLCC opened in 1962 with only one location. It grew to accommodate the needs of the community with four main campuses and two education centers. Today, we are the largest higher education institution in the region, truly empowering students, expanding minds, and changing lives. We have an average class size of 23 with 19 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Just for a fun fact, over 50% of the households in the St. Louis area have at least one STLCC alum in them. Next up, we want to share with you information about our campus locations. Opening in 1971, our Flores of Valley campus is nestled on 108 acres of rolling and beautifully wooded hills of Ferguson, Missouri. This campus is known, known for excellence in engineering and technology and is home to St. Louis's only two-year biotechnology program. Built on the old Highland Park Amusement Park, was built on where the old Highland Amusement Park was located, just steps away from the world's famous St. Louis Zoo, Forest Park and the St. Louis Science Center. Our Forest Park campus sits in the heart of the city, a competitive allied health program that feeds the city's major health centers, a Cisco Academy and top flight culinary school all call Forest Park home. Named after the Merrimack River, our Merrimack campus is located right off Big Bed and sits on 78 acres in the bustling heart of Kirkwood, close to the Magic House. This campus houses excelling programs like the Physical Therapy Assistant, Horticulture, and the Nationally Recognized Arts Program. Our newest main campus, Wildwood, is the state-of-the-art green energy facility that has LEED gold level certification 
leadership in energy and environmental design, exposing 90% of the building to natural light. Right off Highway 109 in Manchester, this campus houses programs like behavioral health support, deaf communication studies, EMT, and most recently, the nursing program. With four main campuses, we are pretty spread out over the St. Louis region, although we do have a few other locations to make us even more accessible to our students. We have two education centers, one in South County, and then our William J. Harrison Education Center, which is located in North City. We have a corporate college in Bridgeton, and our Center for Workforce Innovation is close to the Florida Valley campus and houses aerospace, large equipment, hands-on technical training labs. As you can see, we have multiple locations to fit the needs of our students. And once you apply to STLCC, you could take classes at any campus location. We even provide our students with free Metro passes or U passes for the bus and free parking at each of our campus locations. We'd like to think of STLCC as a quality education accessible to all at an affordable rate. Next up, I'm going to hand it on over to Sharice for the next segment of our presentation. Sharice. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharice. So I'm going to start off with the ways to learn at STLCC. In addition to many locations, STLCC now offers four different ways to learn. Our newest is live virtual lecture classes, which means the class meets online on specific dates and times using a streaming service. Students are required to be online during lecture class times to experience real-time engagement. We also have our traditional face-to-face -face classes that are being held safely at lower capacity across all of our campuses. These are mostly going to be your core education classes and classes that require labs or hands-on work. Online class option means students manage their time to complete homework class materials and projects by assigned deadlines in a virtual environment. Tests are mostly online, but some classes do still require in-person proctored tests. Lastly, our hybrid option mixes two of, the three, two of the three above course modalities, whether that be face-to-face -face and live virtual lecture, face-to-face -face with online, or live virtual lecture with online. All of these details are listed in our interactive class schedule and should be considered when a student is putting together their ideal schedule. Although life has certainly changed this past year, STLCC is still offering exciting campus life opportunities. We have hundreds of clubs and organizations, student groups and events just waiting for you. You can even participate in most activities as a prospective student and community member for free. Our recent virtual events include a comedy show and live game shows with prizes. STLCC also has Archer Athletics. Men and women's basketball is housed at Forest Park. Men's soccer is at Florissant Valley, while Merrimack has volleyball, baseball, softball, and women's soccer. As stated before, STLCC is one college, which means you can be on a team at Merrimack and take classes at Wildwood. The designated location for the team is where the games and practices are. You can find more information about open tryouts, team schedules, and connect with coaches at archersathletics.com. Beyond a vibrant campus life and athletics, STLCC has over 80 plus degrees and certificate programs. I will start by discussing our most popular degree, which is the General Transfer Studies. This program is 60 credit hours, on average two years of coursework. Students complete this program before transferring to their chosen four-year institution. Two years with us, and then two years with them completes a four years bachelor's degree. We have lots of articulate agreements and transfer guides available to assist students with this process. Another helpful tool is a website called transferology.com. 
Students use this website to easily select classes at STLCC that will transfer to popular universities all across the nation. A huge benefit to our students is the Missouri's Core 42 Guaranteed Transfer. Core 42 classes are designated as Motor Classes, or MOTR, which stands for Missouri Transfer. These courses transfer seamlessly one-to-one -one among all colleges and universities in the state of Missouri. What this means to our students is that the exact courses that they take with us is the exact credits they get when they transfer. Our career and technical education programs are 60 credit hours or under and generally take less than two years to complete. These programs are designed to get you hands-on experience and get you to work after graduation. We have Associates of Applied Science, Certificate of Proficiency, and Certificate of Specialization and Job Preparation or Advancement. Many of these certificates are stackable and can be used towards an associate's degree. Our most popular programs right now are in the IT field like networking, IT help desk, and cybersecurity. We also have accelerated job training programs offered in engineering, industrial technology trades, health science, business management, and technology. Offerings are based on local demands, but our most popular programs like our, like our Boeing partnership and Code Camp powered by Launch Code are actually free. Highly intensive programs that guarantee interviews upon completion. STLCC is truly a wonderful value. When people think of community college, some of the first things that come to mind is the savings and affordability. And that is certainly true for STLCC. We are about a third of the cost of public universities here in Missouri, which in turn saves you a great deal of money per year. Our current cost per credit hour for the 2021 year is $116.50 for in-district students, which is such an affordable rate for our education. If anyone is still currently in high school or maybe heading into senior year, we do, have, we do offer dual enrollment opportunities as well. We have a reduced rate for dual enrollment students at $67 per credit hour. This is a great opportunity for students that want to jump, get a jump start on their college career. And with community colleges, like I said before, affor affordability is often the first thing that comes to mind, but it's not just about the savings. It's about what you are getting in value for your education as well. With STLCC, you are getting small classes, which makes for a wonderful educational experience. You also have so many involvement opportunities such as student clubs and organizations and sports. There is also so many things that, can, that you can study like previously mentioned. The possibilities are just endless when you get started with us here at STLCC. As you're thinking about getting, as you're thinking about registering for classes at STLCC, you may be thinking of how to help with the cost of those classes through financial aid and scholarships. The gateway to apply for financial aid is the FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and it opened on October 1st. The FAFSA is really the start to learning about your eligibility for different federal and state aid programs, which includes grants, such as the Pell Grant, work study, federal loans, and the A plus scholarship. The A plus scholarship program is considered financial aid. So you are required to complete the FAFSA for each year in order to maintain these benefits. We will hear from Chantel in just a few minutes who will, take more, who will talk more about the A plus in detail. Additionally, the FAFSA is tied to a certain academic year, so that, so that is why you will need to complete it each year that you are with us. You can also apply for scholarships through our STLCC Foundation. We have very generous alumni donors throughout the community that have set up different scholarship funds for our students. 
So know that there are other scholarship opportunities outside of the need-based financial aid. And know that after you apply to STLCC and complete your FAFSA, you will be assigned a financial aid counselor so you will have assistance as you go through the process of obtaining financial aid. St. Louis Community College is here to support students the best that we can during this difficult time. We are available through a new chat feature that we have put into place to assist students in a timely manner. The departments listed are also available to chat with at the link provided. Although things may look a little different in our world right now, our commitment to helping students succeed has not wavered. Next up, I would like to discuss our steps to getting enrolled at STLCC. The first step to enrolling is to complete the application for admission. The application is free and online for you to complete. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. The spring and fall 2021 application is currently open. So if you haven't done so already, you can go ahead and do that soon if you'd like. The application is important to complete because it's the start to creating your student records at STLCC. Once you have submitted your application, you will receive a welcome email from STLCC within 24 hours or so. The admittance email will have your student A number and your next steps to get connected. Getting connected refers to getting access to your STLCC student accounts, such as your Banner Self Service account your student email, and Navigate account. After you've been admitted to STLCC, you should go ahead and complete the FAFSA to apply for financial aid. When submitting your FAFSA at STLCC, be sure to use the code 002469. Again, Chantel will cover this information and much more in her segment of the presentation. In preparing to register for classes, you will want to submit your transcript and test scores. That includes your final high school transcript, all college transcripts if you have attended another college, or if you have taken dual credit, dual enrollment classes while in high school. Test scores would be ACT or SAT scores if you have already taken them. If you have not taken the ACT or SAT, or do not plan to, we do not require it. Please know that if you do not plan to submit your test scores, you will be required to take a placement test instead. This is to help our academic advisors determine your course placement. But if you do have ACT or SAT scores, it is useful to submit them to use, use so that our academic advisors can use, the, use those scores to help you place into the appropriate courses. In some instances, ACT or SAT scores combined with your GPA can waive all or portions of the placement test. The next step is to get advised and register for classes. During this time, we want to support students the best we can while maintaining the safety of everyone. With that, all of these steps that I mentioned are, are all able to be completed remotely. We are here to support students by phone, email, or live chats. Our academic advisors are currently meeting with students over the phone or over video calls, whichever works best for you. During your meetings, you can discuss the different majors you might be considering, discuss goals, ask questions, build course schedule and register for your courses. After you register for your classes, paying for those classes can take a few different forms. So if you are using financial aid, you will need to follow up with up on your financial aid requirements. We have our student portal, Better Self Service, where you will be doing a lot of things such as registering for classes, as well as following up on financial aid requirements. Banner Self Service is also where you pay for your classes, whether that's in full 
are signing up for a payment plan. We do have flexible payment plan options available as well. And then as we approach the start of the semester, you want to prepare for the start of your classes by ordering your textbooks and getting your STLCC one card or student ID. We would like to encourage you to follow us on our various social media platforms. It's a great opportunity to see what STLCC has to offer and envision yourself as a student, especially right now in our virtual world. We want to thank you for listening to the, the first portion of our presentation and we'll now in our and we'll now segment over to Chantel and Philip so that they can discuss all the details as it relates to the A plus program. Perfect. Thank you, Sharice, for that introduction. Okay, so guys, thank you for joining us. Um, as Meredith has already mentioned before, but I wanted to say it again, you could have been anywhere in the world today, but you decided to be here with us and we are oh so grateful. So we're gonna jump right into this presentation. So the purpose why we are here today is to get you to and through college utilizing your A plus scholarship by exploring the background of the a program and providing you with the answers to the following questions. What are the requirements? Where do I begin? What is the FAFSA and why do I have to do it? Um, what are STLCC deadlines? How long am I eligible? How do I remain eligible? And what costs are not covered? And how can I pay for the things that are not covered? And we will be going to the next slide. So let's start with the background. So in order to know um, more and go into more depth about the a program, we need to understand where the funds come from and why it was started. So the a background, Missouri's Outstanding Schools Act was signed into law by um, the formal, former, formal, I'm sorry, excuse me, Governor Mel Cornahan on May 27th, 1993. Um, and it was one of the reforms that was birthed out of this act was the A plus program. And the A plus program was designed to um, help qualifying high school students like yourself attend community colleges or technical programs for free. And I'm gonna say that again, for free. Um, since 1993, over 50,000 students have gone to school on the A plus scholarship. What are the A-plus program requirements, you ask? Well, there are some standard things that your um, A-plus liaison that's located at your high school may have already mentioned to you guys already, but I'm gonna go over them again. So the standard A-plus requirements would be um, a citizen of the US or a permanent resident, enter into a written agreement with your high school prior to graduation, graduate from a participating A-plus high school, Maintain at least a 2.5 GPA, achieve 95% attendance record, complete 50 hours of mentoring, tutoring, or volunteering. And I'm going to put an asterisk right there because we're going to jump more into that later due to COVID restrictions. Um, demonstrate good, good citizenship, I'm sorry, um, and make sure that you score proficient on the advanced um, DESE mathematics test and um, subscore so there is a um a caveat to if you do not score proficiency on the desi mathematics and in parentheses it says um the 2021 students may qualify with a combined act map subscore and high school gpa so like i mentioned today about those 50 hours of completing mentor uh, or mentoring tutoring or volunteering so as you know due to covert restrictions um, the state of Missouri has decided to do the exemption and that falls under the exemption category for our high school graduates. So instead of completing the 15 hour or 50 hours, you only have to complete 25 hours of mentoring. And um, you may use half of those hours um, for job shadowing. So please make sure you reach out to your A plus liaisons at your high school, because these are some of the requirements that you must meet before you get to us. So um, they would be the best person to contact concerning those type of requirements.
where do I begin? So of course, as the ladies mentioned before, you wanna to apply to STLCC, what better school to attend, right? Um, as a degree seeking student. So degree seeking means I want to um, come to your college and I want to um, finish with a certificate or a degree program. So you're gonna come in and you're gonna stay with us into um, completion or graduation. So that's a degree seeking student. Um, complete the ACCUPLACE or ACT exam. And those two things are needed so that way we can assess you in those core classes like math and English. Um, and the next thing would be to submit your FAFSA application for the 2021 or the 21-22 school year, um, as it was stated before, and our school code is 002469. So I'm gonna step back a little bit um, so the 21-22 FAST application is for those students who plan on entering STLCC fall of 21. If you are a student and you plan to come in the summer prior to fall, right after you graduate from high school, you need to also complete the 20, the uh, 20, I'm sorry, the 2021 FAST as well. So make sure you do both if you plan on starting in the summer. The next thing you want to do is to make sure you register for at least 12 credit hours or six credit hours for my students who have a documented disability. And if you are a student who have a documented disability, um, you want to make sure you contact our access department so that way that can get on record. So that way you don't have to take the 12 hours, you can take the six hours and still utilize your A plus program. And the last thing you would want to do is view banner self-service for your financial aid requirements. And it is so important, you guys. A lot of my students, um, when it's their first time from high school, the, the only thing that they feel that they have to do is to complete the FAFSA, which is important as well, but it's just the first step to the process. So make sure you do your FAFSA, but then also follow up um, with banner self-service to complete the remaining financial aid requirements. And I'm gonna discuss those requirements um, later in the session. So the other thing that you want to do would be to make sure that you contact your guidance counselor or um, the Office of Administration at your high school to ensure that those final high school transcripts with the A plus seal is on your transcript and that your transcript is sent um, immediately after high school commencement. Um, I would probably say either the number one or the number two thing, the reason why the A plus um, award is delayed being applied to a student's account is due to the transcript is either not on file or either the transcript was not stamped. So please make sure prior to graduation, they may be getting these things together with you guys right now and getting releases signed stating like, hey, I wanna go to these five colleges, please send my transcript here and just ensure that the transcript is sent to STLCC um, and make sure that it will be stamped as well. Um, so we went over request right away, high school graduation date. Oh, my early graduates. So if you are an early high school graduate or a graduate at all, um, I want to congratulate you on that um, achievement. But my early December graduates that will probably be starting with us this spring 2021, make sure that you get your high school transcript sent immediately once it's available. Um, we are aware that it's not always aligned with our um, dates, um, but make sure it's sent to the college right away. Um, you will probably have to either secure your classes with a payment plan or either pay up front and get reimbursed on the back end by A plus until um, the high school has sent over your transcripts, which is normally like the third or fourth week of January once they get back you know, into the office from winter break. So, um, oh, and my students who have dual credit or AP credit um, with other institutions that you might've taken classes while you were in high school or during the summers, make sure you contact those institutions as well. Because a lot of times since they might've happened a while back, people forget about them. But since you are seeking financial assistance, and A plus falls under financial assistance, you do have to submit all those transcripts from those other schools as well. Okay. 
So what is the FAFSA? Well, the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and it determines eligibility for federal funding like grants. So federal grants are like um, the federal Pell Grant, federal SEOG, um, federal loans are like Parent PLUS loan, um, the federal um, Stanford loans, which you can get them in sub or unsub, and then also the federal work study program. So once you do your FAFSA application, we will be able to um, take that application and process your application and it will be able to tell us how much aid that you're eligible for or how much we can give you. We also noted our student code again, or not student code, school code again. So that way, if you didn't get it the first time, make sure you take a snapshot or write it down in the notes on your phone. And then also I always have my students write down their FAFSA password and username in the notes on their phone as well. Because a lot of times, since you only do FAFSA once a year, a lot of times you kind of forget what your login information is. So always keep that information close to you and accessible. So that way, if you have to make any changes to your FAFSA, you already know what your password and your username is because you have it in the notes on your phone. Um, so we're gonna jump down and discuss EFC. So EFC, stands for expected family contribution. And that number ranges from zero to nine, 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 infinity and beyond. <laughs> so what that number tells us is how much um, the family can afford to pay or go towards their child's education. So by no means, it doesn't mean that that's the money that you automatically have to pay, but it just is a tool um, that's calculated by the government to let us know how much money to give you. And then we apply the aid on your account based off that amount. Okay, so the finance, so the financial aid process goes like this. So the top right corner where it says complete your FAFSA, after you've done your FAFSA, because we just talked about that, in about two to three business days, we'll get something that's called a student aid report. And that's what the SAR stands for. And it's going to give us a calculation. And that calculation is what we discussed in the previous slide, which is the expected family contribution. It'll spit out a number. And based off that number that ranges from zero to 9999, we will be able to determine how much financial aid that you need and we'll place it on your account. The second piece of the pie is the bottom right corner which is the school process. So from the time we get your FAFSA application and you've completed all your financial aid requirements by logging into Banner Self Service, two to three business days after your FAFSA has been completed, you'll have like your standard three forms that go over federal policy and um, different things like that. And then it will also include your A plus policy. So make sure you're reading those things and you're logging into Banner Self Service to submit your financial aid requirements. Once we get all of those requirements together, including the, excuse me, the high school transcript, it takes us literally like five to 10 business days to process your award and to get back with you to determine how much aid that you would get for the year. At the lower left corner where it says school monitoring, there's something that's called an enrollment verification period. And that kind of also ties in with financial aid and then also ties in with enrollment because the school must report enrollment um, to the government. So for the first four to five weeks of school, make sure that you are attending class, make sure that you are involved in class, make sure you are participating in class and also beyond those four to five weeks as well. But um, for sure, make sure that you are doing all of those things. And if you are absent from class, please make sure you're in contact with your instructor so that they are aware what's going on with your situation, okay? Um, and after those five weeks have passed, then we're at the top left corner under disbursement. So once we get attendance verified from your instructors, it gives us the green light to go ahead and officially pay the funds on your account to pay off any tuition and things like that. And then if you paid up front, like if you were one of those people who may have attended in summer and you paid up front, you'll, um, it will show as a refund on your account. And when it shows as a refund on your account, then we'll, we can start the reimbursement process. So the reimbursement process for A plus looks a little bit differently um, in comparison to federal funds because A-plus falls under state funds. And we can't actually 
um, release the actual refund in hand until we actually get the funds from the state of Missouri. So even though it may reflect as a refund on your student account after that fifth week of school, we actually don't issue the official refund to like your checking your checking account or bank mobile account until the end of the term. It's normally towards the end of the term once we get the funds, um, the check from the state of Missouri. Okay, so why do I have to complete a FAFSA each year? Because it is an A plus requirement to make a good faith effort to secure all federal aid first by submitting a FAFSA. So just keep in mind, even though you may not be eligible for anything federal, you have to submit a FAFSA every year because the state of Missouri wants to ensure that you have secured all funds and aid that is eligible to you before they pay any A plus funds. And at this point, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to pass this section over to Mr. Philip Tier. Philip, go ahead and take it away. All right, thank you, Chantel. So Chantel spent some time talking about how do you receive your A plus scholarship and how do you get that earned through the high school? And now I'm going to talk more and kind of delve deeper into utilizing the A-plus scholarship and maintaining that throughout your time at the college level. So as she was just referring to that good faith effort of doing the FAFSA application is to make sure that there's any federal aid available, specifically the federal Pell Grant, that would first be applied before receiving any A-plus funding from the state. So a common question is how does that work if I receive both or am I not awarded one or the other? So this will break that down. So you see this first category here where A plus wins. So if your student's EFC, so that expected family contribution is too high to qualify for the Pell Grant, so you're not receiving any federal funding, you will receive the full A plus eligibility will be awarded to you for the semester. So the middle column, it's a draw, so you might receive a little bit of both, and that's where you, your EFC falls, where you will receive some Pell Grant funding, but not enough to cover or exceed your full tuition costs. So at this point, the Pell Grant is first applied, and then any remaining tuition charges is going to be covered by A+. Plus. So it's kind of like a safety net there to make sure it's all covered. And then the last scenario is the Pell Grant wins. So this is a student whose EFC allows them to be eligible for a Pell Grant award that covers all of their tuition. Um, so this scenario, then you would not receive any A plus because your tuition is already covered. One concern here is, does that mean I lose my A plus scholarship? No, it does not. So again, since you're applying for the Pell Grant every year and using that FAFSA every year, just because you don't receive your A plus this year based on your EFC, your EFC may change next year or a couple years from now, and you would still have that A plus to be able to utilize. And I'll kind of delve into that in a little bit more here. Okay, and what are STLCC's specific deadlines? So keep in mind the deadlines at any college, they're going to have priority deadlines and your final deadline. So as Chantel mentioned, not only do you have to do the FAFSA each year, you will have additional requirements that you need to complete each year, whether they're policy agreements, maybe you got selected by the federal government for a process called verification or your A-plus contracts. And a quick note on verification, that is a process about a third of students do get selected just to verify the income and other household information provided on the FAFSA is correct. And you, even as an A-plus recipient, you do have to finalize the verification process before being awarded A plus as well. So just keep that in mind if you are selected for that process. And we always encourage students to get completed by our priority deadlines. So that way you know that there's no surprises when tuition's due and that deadline's approaching and you know that A plus is gonna be there and ready to go.
Okay, so back to how long are you eligible for the A plus award? So your eligibility expires when one of the following occurs first. So A plus is to utilize to be able to receive an associate's degree from a Missouri community college. So obviously one of those instances is on the receipt of an associate's degree that is when your A plus utilization would end. Another one is 48 months or four years after high school graduation. So for example, if you graduate high school, um, if you graduated in May of 2020, you would be eligible for A plus for four years after that, the following May of 2024. The other one, um, the last one is a little more nuanced, is the completion of 105% of the credit hours required for your current program that you're enrolled in. So this 105% of the credit hours essentially allows for one additional course. Um, so maybe a withdrawal or something happened um, with the class. And for example, at St. Louis Community College, a typical program here is 60 credit hours, which would account for, again, one additional class, essentially, it's about right around 63 credit hours total. Once you exceed that number, you would no longer be eligible for A+. Plus. And what this does include is, let's say you're transferring from one community college to another, this wouldn't, wouldn't include any credit hours transferred from an otherwise eligible A plus school. So another community college in the state of Missouri. What would not be considered specifically would be any developmental remedial hours or transferred hours except by a school from another, let's say a four year institution that you would not have been able to utilize A plus. Additionally, any credit hours earned before high school graduation. So if you participated in dual credit or dual enrollment, those courses would not be included either to this 105% total. Okay, so how do you maintain your A plus award once you get there? So your initial semester, so let's say your first semester is in the fall, you must achieve at least a 2.0 GPA by the end of that fall semester. And as we mentioned, in order to receive A+, you must be a full-time student. So that means for that full fall semester, you must be enrolled at least 12 credit hours. Spring is the same. Summers is a minimum of six credit hours. So in order to receive it the following semester, you must complete at least the full-time amount of credit hours. So again, for the fall semester, in order to retain it for the next spring semester, for example, you must complete at least 12 of your credit hours for the fall semester to continue with the program. Um, there are also exceptions for any accommodations, perhaps through our access office here at St. Louis Community College where a student may be taking less than um, 12 credit hours specifically for those reasons, or there are some programs. So again, here at STLCC, our radio, radiological technology program um, is a good example where students are not even were able to take a full credit load of full time. So for one semester, the courses that are available to them is only 11 credit hours. In those instances, a student would still be eligible for A plus and able to continue on because that's what's mandated by the program. And so that's after your first semester. Renewal semesters, it's still the same. You must complete that full-time equivalent of credit hours for the semester you attended. But now after that first semester, the GPA requirement raises slightly to a 2.5 GPA up from a 2.0. And so you just wanna keep that in mind to moving forward. All right, what does A plus cover? And I'm gonna circle a little bit back to the Pell Grant versus A plus with this as well. So A plus covers 100% of tuition and fees at the community college. It does not cover books and supplies for your program. It does not recover any repeat courses. So let's say you took a course, uh, maybe you withdrew from it, or maybe you didn't get the grade you wanted and you're taking again a following se semester. 
A plus would not cover that course. Additionally, any additional program fees for specific programs. So sometimes programs have additional fees, whether it's in the cost of additional materials or just lab time um, or fees related to that, A plus will not cover. And circling back to the A plus versus the Pell Grant described earlier, um, again, a concern that students receiving the Pell Grant instead of A pluses are losing A plus funding. However, if you are a full Pell Grant like award recipient, the Pell Grant does cover or can cover, I should say, more than just tuition. So depending on your eligibility for the federal Pell Grant, you may receive aid that covers more than your tuition, which you could utilize for books, supplies, program fees, repeat courses, um, and other things. So just keep that in mind too. Um, and another benefit of doing the FAFSA application in case you are eligible for that Pell Grant. Okay, so with that said, so let's say you receive a plus fully, you are not eligible for Pell Grant funding, it does not pay for anything more than tuition and fees. How can you pay for other things, um, such as the books or program costs? So scholarships, we recommend it every student takes the opportunity and the time to apply for scholarships. So every college essentially will typically have their own internal scholarship application process. So at STLCC, for example, we do have um, an online application portal that gets you through to several hundred scholarships offered by the foundation here um, at STLCC. And other colleges will have similar processes in place. There are also external scholarships out there. So we do encourage students to take the time and kind of look for those external scholarship opportunities. They may be in the community, um, or they may be elsewhere and kind of more regional or even at the national level. I do always advise though, just be wary sometimes, use some common sense and judgment when looking for external scholarships. Um, typically, if it's something looks too good to be true, or it's a very high application cost, maybe several hundred dollars and they're guaranteeing some scholarship funding for you. Um, it's probably too good to be true if it looks that way. So just be aware of those out there, um, but don't let that deter you from the many external scholarships that are legitimate and available to students. Additionally, there is the federal work study program. So when you do complete that FAFSA application, it will ask you if you are interested in work study. Um, if you are the work study program, it's essentially on campus student employment. And so you'd be able to work on campus, but you are receiving payment essentially through federal awards. So as the student, you get paid the same way. You don't notice a little any difference, um, but it is a type of federal funding um, and federal aid. So keep that in mind that there are additional kind of requirements to maintain with work study, but actually with maintaining that GPA requirement for A plus, you would be able to still continue with work study because it's about the same GPA requirement there, as well as the credit hour requirements. So I highly recommend um, doing work study if that interests you working on a campus. I am biased though as I got my start in the my career in higher education working as a work study student myself. I know Chantel did as well um, and many others that I work with here at the college. So it is a great opportunity. Um, and lastly, there is direct student loans. So we do encourage this to kind of be the last option um, that you consider just to avoid any unnecessary student debt. But would you understand that sometimes the student loan debt is necessary to cover the rest of those costs as far as books, um, program fees, or even living expenses? So if you are interested in direct student loans, most community colleges, us included, do not auto award or auto package these student loans. We don't assume that you want them. So there would be a separate loan application piece to the college. So you just follow up with a financial aid office if you are interested in student loans. And just please be reminded that the student loans, these are funds that you do have to pay back to the federal government. It's not like 
federal grants or A plus where it's considered quote unquote free money that you do not have to pay back. Okay, so A plus updates. So please keep in mind with all of this I just said and Chantel said about the A plus program, updates do happen. Um, so for example, with the recent changes with the pandemic, specifically for the spring 2020 semester, there are a lot of updates there of the requirements to maintain and even receive the A plus awards moving forward. Um, and an additional one that we wanna highlight here is one that was affected about a year or two ago, um, where students, this is for students who do not complete that 12 credit hours or six hours or less, to basically that full-time equivalent that I mentioned earlier. So if you do drop specifically withdraw from a course and you withdraw below 12 credit hours, you will not have to owe any A plus funding back, but you would not be eligible for A plus the next semester. Um, so again, so that's that key point. If you do not complete or earn at least that full time equivalent, you would not be eligible for A plus the next semester. Now, what if you're a student who maybe you enrolled in 15 credit hours instead of 12 for the fall semester and you withdraw just from one course. So you withdraw from a class, you withdraw down to 12 hours, you're still completing that 12 hours, that full time equivalent, but now you will have to owe back the three hours you withdrew because you still maintain eligibility for next semester. So essentially you will only be penalized in one of two ways. Um, you will not have to owe back and lose your eligibility for A+. So as long as you earn over the 12 credit hour or at least 12 credit hours of that full-time equivalence, even if you withdraw from a course or two, you would still be eligible for the following semester, but if you withdraw below and do not complete or earn that full-time equivalent, that 12 hours, then you would not be eligible for the next semester. Okay, well, the last things we want to touch base on is FERPA, um, which stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. What this is, is this protects students and their information at the college. So this protects all college students. So no, regardless of age, even if maybe you're not age 18 yet, um, this does protect your information. So we cannot provide any specific account information. So grades, status of your financial aid or A+, requirements you have left to complete A+, any specifics to you, we cannot share with anybody else, including your parents, your friends, your high school counselors and teachers, um, anyone like that. So if you do want that information to be able to be provided, you can provide consent to the college in order for us to be able to provide that information. So at STLCC, we have a FERPA release form that you'd complete through admissions and essentially you would state the name of anybody that you want us to be able to provide essentially the same information that we'd be able to provide you, the student, directly. And then when they call or come onto campus, they would just need to prevent provide identification um, so we know who they say they are and then we can provide them that information. So please just keep that in mind and especially any parents keep that in mind if you are assisting your children with this process, you may want to check into any FERPA release consents available at the college so that way you can act on behalf of your child and also get any information um, that they would otherwise be able to receive. Okay, so that is the end of our presentation. Um, please do not hesitate to reach out to us directly if you have any questions. There's our main contact information on there. And also please check out our website, stlcc.edu. We always have new ways of communicating and contacts and everything updating on there. And just want to also, thank you all for taking the time today to allow us to share this information with you. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for attending and listening. We look forward to hearing from you soon. 
Uh, before ending the session, we would like to remind you that the information provided in this presentation is subject to, subject to change at any time. A plus, a plus rules and regulations, as Philip and Chantel mentioned, are mandated by the state of Missouri, and STLCC is no, notified when changes are made. Therefore, it is always important to check with an STLCC st staff member for the most up-to-date information. Thanks again for listening, and we look forward to seeing you soon.